Welcome everyone to the second video in the Getting Started with Burp Suite series. If you're um, interested in discussions around starting Burp, um, upgrading Burp, then check out the video right before this. Uh, that's what that one is geared towards. In this video, we're just taking the next steps and we're gonna talk just real briefly about the basic UI, the basic components of that UI and how to navigate that. So upon launching Burp, um, already selected, uh, we didn't have any configuration to load. We've, all, we've also already loaded a temporary project. And then one of the first screens that you're typically greeted with is the dashboard. So as you can see here, the dashboard is, is broken into really two to three main components. Uh, on the left-hand side, we have tasks, um, running tasks, and, and we'll talk about those here in a future video. Below that, we have the event log, and then off to the right, we have the issue activity. Now, unfortunately, as the, uh, the interface indicates, this is for the pro version only, so you so commercial license. But what's really helpful about that feature is that while you're engaging in and, and, and looking at different traffic, as, it's, as the traffic is pass, passing through Burp as a proxy, then it can help to identify potential issues. And those issues will show up here, and that might draw your attention to something quicker or, or possibly an issue that maybe you, you wouldn't have discovered when you know, doing the investigation completely manually. So we can close that for now since we've just got the commercial, ver or I'm sorry, the, the community edition. Um, from there, we're going to have the file menu, and uh, some of this capability is going to be repeated throughout some of the, the different UI components that we'll talk about here. Um, other parts, you, you can only get access to certain functionality through this file menu. So just keep that in mind. Now, in this video, I'm not intending to go through all of the capabilities because that would turn into a very long video, because that would turn into a very long video. So I'm going to save that and go through each functional area here in, in separate, more focused videos. So again, we're just getting a start, just getting started looking at the UI. With Burp then, the dropdown, as you can see here, uh, just some real basic options, configuration library, some user options stuff, being able to restore defaults to load user options. If you save user options to a file, make modifications, you can save those. Um, options for the project, and then you have some specific um, areas uh, around intruder and repeater. And, and we'll talk about those two um, capabilities here in a later video. We also have the window, be able to attach or detach a window. Windows. It's a very popular, very common thing. Uh, many folks out there are working with multiple displays or, or very large curved displays. And so it's nice to be able to detach these windows and kind of set things up the way that fits your workflow. Uh, the final one is just the help. We saw this in the previous video, check for updates, get information about Burp, get um, submit bugs, go to the documentation any number of things. If you're looking for information about Burp, then this is usually a good place to start. Now, below the file menu, we have really the main tabs, or what I've always considered tabs in terms of the UI. As you can see, we're on the dashboard, but as we move now from left to right, um, we'll be able to select different areas of functionality. So the next one here, just going in order, is the target tab. Every time we select a tab, most of these then will have additional um, you know, additional user interface components below that. So you can see below target, we have sitemap scope and issue definitions. So we may have to navigate multiple, you know, multiple sub UIs as we're working with any, any particular capability or functionality in Burp. And, and this is usually the flow then in order to do that. As you can see, proxy, same thing, multiple tabs below. Um, Intruder doesn't, but likely as we start working with Intruder, you'll see the, how the UI changes. Many of these repeater sequencer will all be very similar. These all are, you know, Intruder repeater sequencer, those are a capability that allows you to really engage the server, the site, the application that you're testing. The target helps to define the scope. Again, we'll talk about that here in a future video. Um, and the proxy is just in really establishing the, this burp as a proxy service to connect your browser to. Um, some of the capability, like decoder, this allows you to just simply decode text. So we could paste, say we had a, a base64 blob of data, we could paste it in here and then choose the decode as or the encode as. So we'll take a look at that again, future video. Um, compare allows us to compare two HTTP request responses. Um, we have our logging capability. We have extender. So Burp is like many tools. It has the ability to be extended through extensions. And there's even a Burp store. So you can go here and, and check out if there are any um, you know, uh, Burp apps that are uh, that would allow you to expand the capability of your, you know, your Burp instance for whatever you would need. 
you can, of course, create your own custom burp extensions. And it's something that is, uh, I would say, fairly well documented and, and very, again, very powerful because now you can engage, you know, create these extensions that allow you to use burp in any fashion that you can really think of. Beyond that, we have project and user options. These are very similar, except user options probably a bit more global and project options then are gonna be applied to individual projects. Um, so from the user options, you can see information, connections, TLS display, and miscellaneous. So really the only, the only change I've made since launching Burp after the installation, after the upgrade is just uh, bumping up that font size a little bit so that it's a little easier to record. The last tab is learn, and this just has a, a number of different resources that are geared around learning burp. Um, of course, we're gonna hide that tab because we really don't need it for the purposes of our videos because that's what I'm, I'm trying to help out with. Okay, so that's all the main UI components. In the next video then, we're gonna go ahead and start with the proxy tab. So the next step really with when working with burp is getting your browser configured to use it or, or possibly using the built-in browser that burp now ships with and begin intercepting traffic so that you can inspect it, modify it, replay it, do whatever you need in terms of your, your security um, or, or vulnerability assessment. So uh, stay tuned and we'll take a look at that in the next video. Thanks for watching.